this is the setup I'm using here. Again, this is the mini PC I'll be using. And over here, I've got two drives connected via USB to the mini PC. Both of these drives are identical and they are Kingston A400s, I believe, 480 gigabytes each. So at some point, I've never done RAID myself before, but at some point I want to try RAID just to see what all the hype is about. Welcome back, welcome back. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to set up a pool and then how to map the network drive to a Windows PC. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to where it says storage on the left hand side here at the top. I'm going to click on that. We don't have any pools right now. That's the whole purpose of this is to manage our disks, create pools and do what we need to do. So I'm going to go to disks first, just so I can ensure that both my drives are being picked up. Well, I've got three drives. Technically, that's the internal drive, the first one. We don't want to mess with that. And then these two here are going to be the external ones I showed you earlier connected by USB um, 3. Shouldn't have any problems as both drives are being detected, so we should be good. I'm going to go back to storage now. And from storage, I'm going to click on create pool. Now, I've never done this before, so let's work through the process together. Create pool. All right, general info. It says it needs a name, so I can just call this um, true NAS. All right, encryption. Uh, at the moment, I'm not going to do any encryption because, again, I'm the only one who's going to be making use of this drive. But for you, if you're using this for actual stuff, this is just a test for me at the moment, you should definitely enable encryption. Next, we have data, and we can choose a layout of the data. So we, we can have either Stripe or we can have Mirror. And let me zoom in as much as I can so we can read what that says. So for Stripe, it says each disk stores data. A Stripe requires at least one disk and has no data redundancy. So... This is going to be where, for example, I have two 500 gigabyte drives. This is going to give me one terabyte or so a thousand gigabytes. Now, if we go to mirror, mirror, so the data is identical in each disk. A mirror requires at least two disks, provides the most redundancy and has the least capacity. So what that means is one drive. Let me see if I can draw this on screen quickly. This is the only diagramming tool I have at the moment. So bear with me. Let me try and explain this as best as I can. So I need three of these. So one, two and three. Right, so my first drive is 500 gigabytes. My second drive is also 500 gigabytes. And what Stripe is going to do, Stripe is going to join these two into one bigger drive. So I'm no longer going to see 500 gigabyte plus 500. I'm going to see one big one terabyte or 1000 gigabyte drive. That's what's going to happen. Now for Mirror, Mirror is going to be different. Mirror is literally going to mirror what is on one drive to the other drive. So let me copy these two, bring them over here. And Mirror is going to say, okay, whatever is on this first 500 gigabyte drive, exactly the same thing is going to be on this one. And this is really good for redundancy because what you could do here, let's say you had larger drives and you had videos and pictures backed up for years and years and years. If you have them mirrored, like I'm going to be doing here in this image, what would happen is everything that's on this drive is mirrored on this one. So if this first drive goes, you're perfectly okay. You're perfectly fine. You can simply continue using the second drive add another drive back in and it should then copy itself over so you always have that redundancy so that's the purpose of doing this and that's why i really wanted to try out what raid is like on here i've never used raid myself but as this is just a test environment for me i'm not going to be keeping this operating system for very long because i need to try casa os as well and any other free open source nas os is i find so i'm i think the best one for me at the moment is simply stripe i want the most storage possible while i'm testing this just to see how well it works most people i would highly 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 recommend mirror and again you will need bare minimum two drives you can use more drives if you want so if you wanted your stuff backed up more times so in case two drives fail you're still good then you would need to go mirror but for me i'm gonna go stripe after i click on stripe here i'm gonna try and leave the rest of this stuff empty even though it has a star beside it and the star norm normally means that you have to fill them in. I'm just going to try and leave them empty. I'm going to click save and go to review. Should be good. At least one data V dev is required. Okay. So where do I need to fill that in? Let's go back to here. Let's do with is blanked out unless I click on one of these. So, all right, let's try that again. Save and go to review. A stripe. Okay, that's fine. All right. So let's click on create pool and see what happens. Click confirm here, then click continue and let's see what's going to happen. Well, that was pretty quick. This is what comes up after the process finishes. I'm only seeing 429 gigabytes at the moment. I'm not entirely sure what happened to striping it to make it one bigger drive, but not too worried about that now. I'll figure that out later on. I think the next thing I need to do is to figure out how to make this accessible from another PC, phone or tablet. So next I'm going to go down to where it says data sets. 
click on that and I'm going to click add data set here on the right hand side. When that comes up, uh, parent path, I'm not going to trouble that name or true NAS share all caps. So it's very, so it just stands out a bit for me. Click on save on the right hand side, just after creating my data set, it popped up with these options here. And the first one I'm going to focus on, it says roles and on here it says not shared. I'm just going to create SMB share and NFS share. So click on that. Um, sure. Click on that. Let's click save. I don't know what I'm doing. Do you want to configure um, this ACL? Enable the service to start automatically. Okay, fine. I think save access control list. All right. For some reason, when I tried to do NFS share, that didn't work. So I'm going to go down to shares here on the left hand side and I can see that my SMB share has started. So what I'm going to do next is try and add, if I can, the NFS over this side. I'm going to click on add here. It needs me to choose amount points. I'm going to choose mount, then true NAS. Uh, leave description empty. If I don't need to type anything, I'm going to leave everything empty and I'm going to click on save, uh, click start. Again, I need to start this automatically. That's been added. All right. So let's go back to storage now. Let's refresh this and I'm going to try and connect my laptop. That should all be okay now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag this over here and, I, and in the very top, I'm going to type backslash backslash then the IP address of this device I'm using. So it should be 192 dot one six eight dot zero dot one seven three it brings this up i should be able to log in should be admin and the password they used to log in so let's see if it works all right so i'm gonna quickly go back in and see if there's something else i've missed i think what i failed to do is create an actual username for me to log in to the network share so i'm gonna click on credentials here go to local users and from here i should be able to add one you might be able to edit this one but i'm not gonna mess with the admin or root user right now i'm just gonna create another one so i'm gonna call this one username admin to admin to password. All right. Yeah. So again, all I'll need for this is a full name, which I'm just using Ron's tech up at the moment. Admin two. That's my login because there was already an admin. So I don't want it to clash. I'm, I put my password in here, password in here. You need to confirm here. And then down here, I should be able to save it. The user pops up here. So let's try that login system one more time. So backslash backslash 192.168.0.173. Let's enter. It's going to ask me for my login. I'm going to do admin two. More choices. Use a different account. So I'm going to try admin two and the password I just made. All right, let's see if that works. Oh, it does work. Perfect. Okay. So now I'm logged into the share. I can open it. And what I'm going to try and do first is create a file, copy a file to it, then copy a file from it. Normally people do word documents, text files just to quickly test it. So new, I have absolutely nothing I can create on here. So I'm going to just drag um, a file in. And if you can write a file to it from another drive. So if I can copy, let's say this is a file I want to copy here. I'm just going to copy it onto there. And if I can copy, then you know it works. If you cannot copy, then you don't have write permissions. So straight away, this is telling me I have view permissions, but not write permissions. So I need to go back in and fix what I need to fix. So I think it's the admin account. I think I figured out what the problem was. So if you go back into credentials and you should be able to find all the users that you have, you should be able to edit whichever user you want, but I already had admin too. So I'm going to click on admin too, click on edit and under edit down here, I have to choose where the drive is and I have to give it read and write permissions. I'm not sure if I did that earlier or if I skipped over it, but just to be on the safe side, I ticked everything. Now you need to go in and do some research to see which ones you need to have. But again, this is just a test environment for me. So I'm just going to quickly tick everything, get it working and I should be good. After that, I clicked on save. Everything seemed to work fine there. Then back onto the share again. This is the share. So if you see the IP address at the top 192.168.0.173, everything is fine. I even spelled true wrong, but that's okay. I'm going to try and copy this file again. So if I drag this over, it says T level template. I'm going to drag it into here. And if it copies, then I know I have right permissions as well. And perfect. It copies in fine. I need to try and find a very big file. Okay, now I know I can copy one single small file. I'm going to try and copy a much larger file or folder. So this is my YouTube resources folder. I'm going to back it up onto here. So again, I can either right click and copy and then paste it here, or I can simply drag and drop it because this is on a different drive. It will automatically just copy it. If this was on the same drive, it would just move it. So I'm going to drag from here to here and I'm getting 112, 113, 114 megabytes per second. And that's roughly a gigabit. So this is transferring at the absolute maximum speed I can get on this laptop, on this network. And that's pretty decent. So far, I've showed you how to 
set up your pool, set up your data store, set up your users and your shares and how to access the drive. But I think that's not very convenient just knowing how to access it. Yes, I can create a shortcut, but I think the most sensible thing to do, this is my Raspberry Pi NAS. This is running Open Media Vault. I want to create an extra network drive here so I can simply go to my PC, this PC and access it from there. You click on the dots here in the top right hand corner where it says see more. Then you go down to map network drive. I'm going to drag this across and from here, you simply need to click on browse and you're going to have, well, I'm going to have two options here. You can have as many options as you want but you need to click on the one for tuners i'm going to click on that one and just give it some time it's going to search 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 and find all the share that i have access to i'm going to use my admin 2 to access this one so admin 2 then i'm going to enter my password and i'm going to say remember my credentials so what will happen is it should auto start and you should be able to access it straight away without having to type the username and password in again then i'm going to click ok and i've got access to all my drives so i'm going to click on that one there true nas share even though i spelled it wrong click on ok again click on finish and if i bring up this pc again this is directly this is the actual drive location but i want to see it in my computer or this pc and that's it there so i now have access to it from here i can double click on it and go into it just like i would any other drive and i can also copy the resources from here to my desktop so before i was getting 113 megabytes writing to the drive to do that i'm going to go into the folder and try and drag this file it's about a gigabyte so let's drag that across and i am getting roughly 90 89 megabytes so reading and writing are pretty decent to be fair writing and reading at almost a maximum speed thank you for watching i think the next video is going to be me trying to figure out how to set up the vpn and access it remotely so i can get into my drive from anywhere